Hello reformers and welcome back to Warsword Conquest and well we have a little bit of news to share here and uh, well I was actually just coming into Lashia here just to get a little bit of food because I'm kind of well I'm not running out of it but you know with such a large army people do tend to eat a huge amount and so I was wanting to stock up on that but just being reminded that there are so many bags of salt available at Lashiak is amazing and I'm gonna have to come back here at some point to get this. I haven't really been utilizing Lashiak as much as I potentially could. Anyway, some news. I have this. Yes, I found, I believe it was Marcus? Marcus, I believe was his name. Marcus the Wise or Marcus the Bright or one of those guys and He's the weapon guy, and basically I found this. It was about, I think it was like 13,000 or something like that. Wasn't that expensive for, you know, what it actually provides, considering it's got 75 piercing damage, which is pretty fantastic. That is the main reason why I decided to go for this over something else. Obviously, I do still have my ball and chain weapon, which, in my opinion, is amazing. I mean, you can see that right here. I mean, it's got you know, crush through blocks. That's basically the one thing that it has that this does not. It is also a little bit shorter, the Destroyer of Eternities, and uh, that might cause some problems. But what we're actually going to do, and the reason why I've started here, is that there are a couple of visitors outside. And you can see here, we have many, many High Elf vassals for us to deal with. So what we're going to be doing is engaging them in battle. Now, bear in mind, I believe our marshal has declared that he is on the way. That is Lord Ugluck. And I'm going to be attacking some people. There we go. Yes, I was hopeful that I'd get at least two in this particular encounter. So let's see what we can do. There you go. 386 versus 235. I have, well, basically gathered an army that is capable of taking fiefs extremely quickly, but I don't know how it's going to perform in field battles. So that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Yes, that's probably going to be a bit worrying, but I think it will be, ooh, this might not even be okay. I'm gonna use Wither right away here so we can maybe kill them a lot quicker than we think. Now bear in mind that of course I am over the encumbrance limit, so that is obviously gonna make a bit of a difference to how effective my skills are, my magic skills that is, but do you see how much damage? Oh yes, do you see how much damage this is? Having 75 piercing damage instead of 40 is amazing. The only thing that this thing does not do is pierce, well, should we say crush, through blocks. Crushing through blocks is just amazing, but you can see here that to this fellow I just dealt 122 damage. So this weapon is, is insane. I haven't really used it that much in battles because most of my units will just do everything that I need them to do basically and uh, say, saying that actually I might be you know convinced to switch to some lighter armor as a way that we can potentially gain some effectiveness and uh, yeah I also bought a ward save as you can see right there, magical shield protects you from damage. I also bought a ward save, so I bought one of those for 20,000. Wasn't that expensive, I actually thought it was 60,000 for some reason. I suppose if you wanna buy three of them, then it's gonna be pretty expensive. Uh, what's actually, what is going on here by the way with our, uh, with our battle? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Not entirely sure what's going on with that. I. Uh, had a look at the options, it doesn't seem like there's anything different, but oh well, never mind, I guess, uh, oh, what, okay, <laughs> uh, I guess they were stuck, I, I suppose they were stuck or something like that, anyway, let's get my magic out once again and we'll try and bless our guys, there we go, oh yes, everyone's doing poison damage, very nice indeed, or should we say everyone is inflicting poison, I do have vermintide here as well, might make sense for me to do something with that, uh, is this is kind of weird. Okay, I, I guess after the first initial round, I, I, I guess my battle size was just really low or something, and uh, maybe maybe something happened with that, I don't know. But it's really nice to be able to try out this new weapon, finally, because as I say, I haven't really been doing much in the way of battles, 
And if I have, I've just allowed my units to do their own thing. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take a healing potion right here so that I can enter the next battle basically damage free. And I think that's going to be a good way to go. There's only 180 units remaining and this... No, no, it's actually not my battle size. It's not my battle size causing any problem. It just seems like the enemy is so incredibly outnumbered because we have a massive amount of tactic skill. And of course we outnumber them in, well army composition as well, so it's really nothing to be too surprised at, I suppose. Anyway, gonna get my forces into a decent position. I'm going with the standard layout here, but I do have a couple of dwarven slaves, or shall we say, you know, role-playing wise, we have some dwarven slaves helping us out, or shall we say, we are forcing them to help us out. And uh, yeah, you can see we have giant slayers and some demon slayers on the front line here mixed in with chaos trolls. And I, I would have rat ogres as well, but it seems like there's not enough space for those guys. And of course, we have the obligatory Gisales and Globadias. And they are, of course, doing a fantastic job as per usual. Anyway, we're going to tell our forces just to charge straight on in here. I'm actually going to go in as well and see if I can maybe help out a little bit. I feel much more confident with this sword than I do with the ball and chain. Because the ball and chain, while it does have its uses, it's extremely good at what it does. It is, shall we say, quite limited in the places that you can use it. Because, yeah, you can use it in a field battle, and you can use it to outrange people in a siege so that you don't need to put yourself in too much danger, and things like that. But when it comes down to close quarters combat, you definitely need something a little bit different. And that's exactly why this sword then comes into play. I mean, I can take out white lions in literally one hit. And that is kind of amazing to me, so I'm pretty happy with this. And this actually makes me feel like I maybe should not have... Whoa, okay. Shield of Thorns. Someone had a Shield of Thorns right there. Anyway, that's maybe the reason why I should not have specced so much into Power Strike. Because I have about seven, or is it eight? I think I have eight maybe in Power Strike. I, I, I don't know. But we can take a look at our character after this and actually see what's going on with Slythe because his quest for cheese knows no limit, and obviously he's going to need enough power strike to be able to break into the cheese packaging, because it obviously comes packaged. I mean, come on. This is this is the Warsword Conquest we're talking about here. This is no, no easy feat. So obviously the cheese comes with packaging. Anyway, point is, we do have a lot of power strike, and I think with this weapon, I could probably make do with about five probably instead of seven so I did maybe waste a couple of points but when it comes down to it having that additional power strike is always decent because some units as we saw previously in this fight are well very tough and we killed wow a hundred exactly very nice okay so there's only 80 remaining this is going to be a super easy fight and then we will be heading on and uh, I don't exactly know where we should go because many of the factions have actually made peace with us by now. We are not at war against, well, basically anyone with the exception of these guys, of course. These guys are obviously, obviously the High Elves and, uh, well, they're kind of annoying. I mean, you can obviously see that. It's kind of kind of obvious, but the point is, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what? Did I just get protected from damage twice? I thought a minor ward say, and again? Okay. I am very surprised. Anyway, I actually thought that it was only going to protect me from one hit. But apparently it protects you from multiple hits, which is pretty insane in my opinion. Okay, just going to tell everyone to charge. There's only 80 remaining. I'm going to tell my globes to get a bit back, as well as the Gisales, of course. We'll let our giant slayers and chaos trolls head in and do what they do best. And that is, of course, rend the enemy. Oh yes, absolutely destroy them from every single direction. And uh, then we will be able to move on. And here's the thing. My plan initially in this episode was to, you know, tackle a couple of the High Elf Fiefs. And, uh, you know, see how that, uh, see how we do there. But the main problem with that is that High Elves are generally very good defenders because they do have amazing ranged units, or at the very least, I think they are amazing. The High Elf 
Hawkeyes, I believe they are called. I mean, we've played Percy, so we should know that they are called Hawkeyes. But for the most part, I don't seem to actually see them getting any kills. So it's a bit weird to me for us to, well, attack a thief and have to go up against Hawkeyes because these Hawkeyes, as you can see right there, are, well, almost next to useless in melee combat. And so if, for example, this guy was to get into melee combat with one of these Hawkeyes, well, it's gonna be a bloodbath, isn't it? It's gonna be so easy for our, well, very strong melee units to get in there and do the damage that they need to do. Anyway, uh, I'm actually gonna just take these guys prisoner, to be honest, because the High Elves are kind of strong enough as it is, and I don't really want them to continue running around and doing what it, whatever it is they do. So let's see if I can maybe get uh, Bloodshade. Why not? We do have a couple of other spaces here. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Oh, there's a Dreadmaster as well. I guess we might as well take that. Well, it seems like we have another situation on our hands here. Lord Azulok decided to engage a couple of the High Elves and, uh, well, they kind of piled in a little bit against him. And so we are going to have to even things up a little bit. We have 451 against the enemy's 338. Now bear in mind that this is, well, just a precursor of what is to come. Now, my other idea that I had was instead of attacking the High Elves, I was going to declare war against a faction that we have not been at war against for quite some time. And that is the Lizardmen. And I thought to myself, yeah, maybe it would be an idea for us to see what we can do about them. Because from what I've been told by a couple of people in the comments, the lizard men are not exactly strong when it comes to their siege defense and so on. So us having a couple of poisoned wind clover deers here and there and having some Gisales and so forth. And, you know, just in general, having some strong ranged AOE we should be able to take the Lizardmen Thieves in, well, no time at all. And so I thought about maybe attacking the Lizardmen. However, the Lizardmen are of course not at war against us, and the High Elves are, and... Well, I, I suppose we kind of have to, uh, we kind of have to deal with them, don't we? We kind of have to deal with them, otherwise they are just going to be allowed to do whatever it is they want to do. And I didn't really want to do that, so... <laughs> Yes, I think it is going to be kind of a, shall we say, default situation here, where even though I would probably prefer to attack the Lizardmen in this case, it's kind of one of those things where I'm forced into this position. Even though the High Elves are not exactly threatening right now, they don't seem to do that much. Like, we're winning these battles very easily. And usually I would say, you know, we're probably going to suffer quite a few casualties, you know, from random bits of damage, you know, that like they have mages and they have pretty strong cavalry and they do have good archers as well, or at least I thought they had good archers, and they haven't really been able to make a dent in our army for the moment. I mean, yeah, look at this, okay. You know, we lost two people. But we've killed so many in comparison. Like, we're bound to lose some people eventually. That's just how it is. So it is kind of a bit weird. Wow, I actually just had my ward save save me from a lance. And I think that was probably going to kill me. So next time I see the guy that gives me ward saves, I'm going to spend another 20k. 100%. Because it just seems like such an invaluable skill. Being able to have that helping you out, especially when you do have, you know, healing potions and all that stuff, at least in field battles, it's going to be so much easier to stay alive in these long, drawn-out battles. Anyway, I'm actually going to, well, shall we say, you're going to be skipping the, the rest of these battles, and I will be seeing you next when we, uh, I think we'll probably be attacking a castle first, just to test out the high elf defenses. Alright, so here we are, and uh, yeah, I did say that we were going to be doing a castle, but we're actually going to be doing a siege against a town. Now, I did say that the 
High Elf Hawkeyes were the highest tier archer, but then I remembered in that field battle just now that the Nagarith Shadow Walkers are actually the highest tier of archer that the High Elves have available to them, and so I was looking out for them in the garrison. This one has 14 of those guys, so it's probably not going to be that difficult, but it really depends on the layout. So let's have a look. Oh, wow. Okay, this is kind of amazing. I was not expecting something like this, and I did not equip my, uh, did not equip my gun. So we are probably going to have some difficulties here. Yeah. Well, uh, what can I do here? I guess what I can do is put my globes outside, put my gisales outside, and just allow my infantry to go up the ladder and see what it can do, because right now, basically, I have no idea. I have no pre-knowledge of this. I have never done this siege ever before, so it's going to be a completely new experience, and that's exactly what I love about mods in general, because they are going to give you a unique experience, at least when the mod actually redoes siege mechanics and, and redoes the layout of various sieges, then you're going to get completely unique experiences every single time. And I think that's really very enjoyable. Anyway, let's see if I can head in here. I'm going to try my best to inch my way inside. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, fantastic. Uh, weirdly enough, there's actually an invisible wall right there, so I can't actually move in. But, oh well, I'll just go over this way instead then. Oh yes, I'm very pleased about my selection of bringing the dwarves along with us, because without these dwarves, I think we would have had, well, probably quite some difficulties penetrating their, de their defenses, but obviously at the moment, I don't know whether we really need to worry about it too much, because we do have our rat ogres, our Ashen assassins and everything, so even without the dwarves it probably would have been okay, but they are doing a lot of work right now. But I gotta say that this two-handed weapon, well technically it's a one-handed slash two-handed weapon, is doing so much damage that it is easy. It's like it feels so much easier. So what I would recommend is if you're playing along with me, if you're playing Winds of Magic, I'd recommend trying to find one of these merchants, buying a weapon that's suitable for your character. I mean, technically this weapon is not really suitable for me. It doesn't really match with my theme of being a Skaven, of course. So that's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but what can you do? You know, if, if the weapon is good, then the weapon is good. And you just gotta use it, you know? If it's this good, you really cannot sacrifice, shall we say, viability in battle for the look of a particular weapon, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, you know, if you're doing something very strict, if you're doing a strict roleplay, then, yeah, that's absolutely understandable if you don't want to use something like this. But this this weapon is very majestic, and it seems like very ornamental for someone like a Skaven to be using it. So it, it is a bit off off theme, so to speak. But I don't really mind so much because it is just so much fun to use. Uh, am I going to die here? Mm, I might die here, or maybe not. Ah, very nice. I was able to slide the way. Ooh, what is actually down here? Oh, interesting. I had no idea that there was a small little room here. I'm actually wondering, can I... <gasps> can I jump? I can. Oh, wow. Okay, I had no idea I could jump out of the window right there. That is amazing. I love the developer's freedom that they give the player, because if you think about it, if you think about how usually, you know, there'll be an invisible wall here and there, you know, it will make it impossible to go through these places, but being given the freedom to choose which way you attack, that's fantastic. That's really, really fun. And I am very thankful for that. Otherwise, I would have been stuck in there, and I wouldn't have been able to come out here and do so much damage. So I'm pretty happy.
Unfortunately, these guys do tend to dodge quite a bit. So it is a bit difficult sometimes. I think I'm going to die here soon, actually. So don't, don't be too surprised when that happens. Yeah, there we go. I called it very, very much. I called my own number. Probably was a bad idea to call my own number there, wasn't it? Mm, probably. But it's okay. It's okay, because we have a huge advantage right now. I have eliminated so many units myself. I really wish we had some kind of kill counter or some kind of report system at the end to tell us how many kills Slythe actually got. I'm actually wondering, does it have that? I've never really seen that, so I don't think it does. But anyway, let's see if this is the final reinforcement wave. I don't think we have eliminated all 450 or so units that the garrison has to offer, but maybe we have. Who knows? Look at this. It feels to me like the High Elves, at least in this town, are on their last legs. So it might be a case of us actually gaining a victory in one fell swoop, and I'm very surprised at that, to be honest. I mean, I actually thought it was going to take a bit of time. Oh yes, and our Globideers are now coming in, doing their little bit of damage to contribute to the end of this fight. Because, of course, the layout was preventing them from doing maximum damage. And it seems like that is it. Yes, it seems like that is indeed it. I am very pleased about that. I was kind of worried, actually. I was kind of worried. Anyway, 26 renown for that. We did lose a couple of Poisoned Wind Globideers, but I did take all of my Skaven slaves out of the garrison from Karak Hearn because, well, what better way to level up a new batch of Poisoned Wind Globideers than to take them along with us? Oh, we only eliminated 330. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to deal with the people in the streets, which is, I think, fine. Isn't it? Maybe it's not fine. Maybe I'm going to get killed. This is worrying. This is actually... This is actually very worrying now. Oh, we have a Poisoned Wind Globideer. Could you hit him, actually? Oh dear. Oh, he, he got him. He got him. Okay. Could you kill the others? Ah, uh, he's, he's doing his best. He's doing his best. I can't actually move the camera right now, so I'm basically stuck in this position. And I can move around the camera a little bit. I feel like he's going to lose. He's definitely going to lose this. I'm very surprised that there are so many defenders in the streets, actually. I felt like we probably would have been able to do this. I was thinking to myself, they're not going to shoot me, you know. They're going to shoot the units in front of me. But no, no, he actually did target me specifically, which was really, really bad. Anyway, let's abandon the siege and actually see how many... Yeah, there's 141 remaining. They do have 359 in the uh, prisoner's hold here, which is pretty fantastic. And we have a decent number of units still alive. However, I am at 1%, so I will have to retreat for the moment. And in the next episode, we will be returning here and going on a siege spree against the High Elves, because now that we know that their, their units are not exactly powerful enough to stand against the might of Clan Cheese, then we will be able to, uh, well, take a couple, I hope. And I think I'm going to start with this town, we're going to go to the Tower of Hoeth, and then we will be going to Lothurn and taking that. And then we will have, well, somewhat split the High Elf territory in half, kind of. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.